How the Romans Got Water A journey through the history and culture of Roman aqueducts. As symbols of Roman engineering prowess and the societal importance of water, aqueducts remain some of the most awe-inspiring architectural feats of the ancient world. These monumental structures, often snaking across vast landscapes, provide a vital lifeline bringing water to cities, towns, and even individual estates throughout the Roman Empire. Before we proceed further, don't forget to subscribe to the Roman Chronicles. Let's get back to the video. Roman aqueducts were far more than mere functional water carriers. They symbolized Roman civilization, its societal needs, and the determination to meet those needs. As urban populations grew and the demand for water increased, these aqueducts supplied water for public baths, fountains, latrines, and even private households. They were a testament to the importance Romans placed on hygiene, public health, and urban comfort. Their design and construction varied across regions and periods, reflecting changes in engineering techniques, materials, and urban water requirements. From the gravity-based channels of the early Republican period to the towering arched structures of the High Empire, each aqueduct was a tailored solution to a unique hydrological challenge. Throughout this video, we will explore the art and science of Roman aqueducts, investigating how these structures were conceived, designed, and built to quench the thirst of an empire. We will delve into the challenges overcome, the solutions implemented, and the enduring legacy they left on our modern world. This is the tale of Roman aqueducts, a true engineering marvel. The Many Shapes of Roman Aqueducts Roman aqueducts encompassed a variety of structural types and categories each tailored to the terrain and the source of water it was designed to harness. These included open channels, which allowed water to flow freely across relatively flat terrain, tunnels bored through mountains to maintain the necessary gradient, bridges to carry the water across valleys, and siphons used to overcome particularly challenging landscapes. Pipes distributed water from the main aqueduct to towns and cities, while distribution tanks known as castella were used to regulate the flow of water. The design, construction, and maintenance of these impressive structures were undertaken by a broad spectrum of professionals. Engineers and surveyors would first identify the water source and plot the course of the aqueduct, ensuring it maintained a steady gradient for the flow of water. Contractors would then be engaged to supply materials and labor, and construction would begin. The work was largely carried out by manual laborers, but also involved skilled artisans, particularly for the more decorative elements of the aqueducts. Once completed, aqueducts were overseen by officials known as water commissioners, who were responsible for their ongoing maintenance and repair. The Romans employed a range of materials in aqueduct construction. Stone and concrete were used for the main structure due to their strength and durability. For the conduits, Materials such as lead or bronze were commonly used because of their resistance to corrosion. In terms of construction techniques, the Romans were masterful in their understanding and application of simple, yet effective engineering principles. The entire aqueduct system relied on gravity to transport water from higher elevations to lower ones. Surveying tools, such as the level and plumb line, ensured the gradient was correct to allow for a constant flow of water without causing erosion or stagnation. The construction of Roman aqueducts was a harmonious blend of practical engineering, meticulous planning, and tireless labor, allowing the Romans to tame nature and meet the water demands of their flourishing civilization. The most important and popular aqueducts in ancient Rome From the earliest to the most technically advanced, Roman aqueducts were both marvels of engineering and monumental statements of Roman dominance over the natural world. The Aqua Appia Rome's first aqueduct was completed in 312 BC and primarily served the city's most populated areas. Construction, mostly underground, it tapped into the Appian Springs east of Rome and provided a much-needed supply of water to the growing city. Aqua Marcia, built in 144 BC, was known for delivering the purest water to Rome from springs in the Anio Valley, more than 90 kilometers away. Its high arching channel is considered a symbol of Roman engineering prowess. The Aqua Virgo, completed in 19 BC, was constructed to bring water from the Salon Springs, about 20 kilometers away from the city center. Known for the clarity and sweetness of its water, it provided for the Baths of Agrippa, 
and the fountains in the Campus Martius. Aqua Claudia, completed in AD 52, was an ambitious project initiated by Emperor Caligula and finished by Claudius. Fed by two separate sources, it stretched nearly 70 kilometers with a significant portion impressively above ground, supported by arches. Aqua Traiana, commissioned by Trajan in AD 109, drew water from Lake Brasciano and was a vital supply of Rome's ever-expanding population. The Aqua Alexandrina, the last of Rome's aqueducts completed in AD 226, conveyed water from Pantano Borges to the city, ending near the Baths of Nero. Each of these aqueducts became an integral part of the landscape they traversed, with several landmarks and attractions springing up around them. Their arches provided an impressive backdrop to the cities and towns they served, while the water they transported was utilized in a variety of ways. Fountains, both public and private, were a common feature in Roman cities, providing a place for citizens to collect water and socialize. Public baths were also a significant part of Roman life, offering a place for hygiene, relaxation, and socializing. Additionally, water from aqueducts was often used to irrigate gardens, both public and private, adding to the aesthetic beauty of the urban landscape. The social and political functions and implications of Roman aqueducts. The development and utilization of aqueducts had a profound impact on Roman society and politics, shaping the very core of Roman values and identity. Their sheer scale and complexity reflected Roman power and glory, as each aqueduct was not just an infrastructural necessity, but a testament to Roman engineering prowess and a monument to the official who commissioned it. The construction of these structures brought order to the cities they served. They allowed for the management and distribution of a crucial resource, enabling the growth of cities, contributing to public health and hygiene, and encouraging civilization's advancement. The existence of aqueducts also allowed for the building of thermae, the grand public baths, which were considered the epitome of Roman civilization, promoting cleanliness, health, and societal cohesion. However, the building and operation of aqueducts were not without controversies. Water theft was a frequent problem. Water waste was another issue, as the availability of such abundant water led to overuse and misuse. Aqueducts could also be utilized to serve the interests or agendas of different individuals or groups. For instance, Roman emperors often constructed new aqueducts or repaired existing ones to gain public favor. The Legacy and Transformation of Roman Water The legacy and transformation of Roman aqueducts can be seen in their resilience and adaptation across centuries and cultures. A number of these engineering marvels survived and continued to serve their purpose. Following the fall of Western Rome, the Byzantine Empire, with its capital in Constantinople, restored and expanded upon many Roman aqueducts. Their notable achievements include the Valens Aqueduct, a significant water-providing infrastructure for Constantinople. In other regions, Arab conquerors, known for their appreciation of hydraulic engineering, preserved and adapted Roman aqueducts. In the Holy Land, Crusaders reused Roman aqueducts to supply water to their newly built fortresses. Even during the Middle Ages, as Rome's population dwindled, a few aqueducts remained in operation. Popes during the Renaissance and Baroque periods undertook the restoration of ancient aqueducts or built new ones, aiming to revive the glory of Rome. The Aqua Virgo, renamed Aqua Virgin, is an excellent example. Restored by Pope Nicholas V in the 15th century, it fed the famous Trevi Fountain, a true masterpiece of Baroque art in Rome. Indeed, aqueducts have left their mark not only on engineering, but also on the arts and culture. They've been depicted in paintings, etchings, and mosaics, often symbolizing the strength and genius of Rome. Literature and music have also been inspired by these structures, with poets and composers fascinated by their grandeur and symbolism. Folklore, too, has been influenced. Stories and legends have sprung up around these impressive waterways, attributing their creation to mythical figures or divine intervention reinforcing their status as true wonders of the ancient world. As we conclude our journey through the history and culture of Roman aqueducts, we are left in awe of the engineering marvels that shaped the landscape of ancient Rome. These monumental structures not only provided a lifeline of water to cities, towns, and estates, but also served as symbols of Roman power, order, and civilization. From the earliest aqueducts to the most grandiose feats of engineering, each structure was a testament to the ingenuity and determination of the Romans to conquer nature and meet the water demands of their empire.
What do you find most fascinating about Roman aqueducts? And how do you think their influence on subsequent civilizations shaped the world we live in today? We would love to hear your thoughts and insights. Please share your reflections in the comments below.